March 10, 2019. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 is a scheduled international passenger flight from Addis Ababa Bowl International Airport in Ethiopia to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in Nairobi, Kenya. The captain is Yared Getachu, a 29-year-old pilot who has been flying with the airline for almost nine years and has logged a total of 8,122 flight hours, including 4,120 hours on the Boeing 737. He has been a Boeing 737-800 captain since November 2017, and Boeing 737 MAX since July 2018. And he is the youngest captain at the airline. The first officer, 25-year-old Ahmed Nua Muhammad, is a recent graduate from the airline's academy with 361 flight hours logged, including 207 hours on the Boeing 737, but only 56 hours on the Boeing 737 MAX. The aircraft is a Boeing 737 MAX 8, registered as ETAVJ. It was manufactured in October 2018 and delivered on November 15, 2018, four months ago. Boeing 737 MAX is the fourth generation of medium-range Boeing 737 passenger aircraft, created to replace the Boeing 737 Next Generation family. During the development of the aircraft, more powerful and efficient engines with a larger fan diameter were installed on the 737 MAX. However, due to their larger size, the new engines could not be installed in place of the old ones. They had to be moved forward and fixed higher. As a result, the moved forward engines, after the aircraft reached a certain angle of attack, were creating a moment of force under the influence of the oncoming airflow and the aircraft began to turn up its nose during the flight. Because of this problem, the company specialists had developed a special computer program, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS. When the nose lift increases, MCAS automatically lowers it, putting the aircraft into a dive. The Boeing company acted in a very non-standard way. They didn't tell anyone about this new product. Before the Indonesian disaster, neither the pilots, technical services, or the airline managers knew about this program. The truth was revealed only after the crash of flight JT-610. The Boeing company developed a special bulletin, which indicated the features of the MCAS, as well as a way to turn it off in the event of erroneous angle of attack data. Eight thirty-eight a.m. The aircraft takes off from Addis Ababa with 149 passengers and eight crew members on board. Ten seconds after takeoff, the crew of Flight 302 begins to experience similar problems that the pilots of the Tragic Lion Air Flight 610 had. The left stick shaker activates and the red and black stripe band exceeds the displayed left-hand airspeed. Right and left altitude and airspeed indications start diverging. Pilots on the third attempt are able to turn the autopilot on. The crew sets speed to 238 knots on the mode control panel. Flaps retraction is commanded by the captain. After 10 seconds, autopilot disconnects automatically after remaining engaged for 32 seconds as the following logic conditions were reached. Climb command with climb rate too low for 5 seconds. 
airspeed is low relative to the minimum operating speed which was erroneously calculated by the computer. During its operation, the autopilot set the engines at about 94% N1, relying on incorrect airspeed data. At the same time the erroneous speed related to the erroneous angle of attack triggers an autopilot pitch down in order to increase the speed. The aircraft, having reached an altitude of about 1,500 feet above the airfield elevation, begins to descend with a vertical speed around 1,400 feet per minute. After the autopilot is disengaged, no crew member tries to move the throttles for the entire flight. At the time the flaps reached the up position and the autopilot was off, the MCAS, triggered by an erroneous left angle of attack value, activates the first automatic nose down trim for a duration of 9 seconds. At the end of the first automatic nose down trim activation, the stabilizer position is 2.1 units. The captain pulls to pitch up the airplane, with a force greater than 90 pounds, or 41 kilograms. The crew trims up for about 2 seconds. After 5 seconds the second automatic nose down trim activates. The captain barely manages to keep the plane in level flight, and asks the first officer to trim up with him. The crew trims up for about 9 seconds, which stops the second automatic nose down trim activation before its expected end. The MCAS activates for around 7 seconds instead of 9. If the captain had continued trimming at that moment, he would have noted that it became much easier to control the aircraft with every second passing. But the pilot stopped trimming as soon as the plane stops descending. The crew decides to cut out the stab trim. The pilots then flip a pair of switches to disable the electrical trim tab system, which also disables the MCAS software. Both pilots apply force on the control column. They succeed in pitching up the airplane. The vertical speed value slowly increases. Pitch increases when both pilots apply forces, and decreases when a single pilot applies force. Force oscillates between 80 and 110 pounds. However, with shutting off the electrical trim system, they also shut off their ability to trim the stabilizer into a neutral position with the electrical switch located on their yokes. The only other possible way to move the stabilizer would be by cranking the wheel by hand. But because the stabilizer was located opposite to the elevator, strong aerodynamic forces were pushing on it. As the pilots have inadvertently left the engines on full takeoff power, which caused the plane to accelerate at high speed, there is further pressure on the stabilizer. The pilot's attempts to manually crank the stabilizer back into position fail. Crossing 9,500 feet altitude above sea level, the crew requests to stop climbing at 14,000 feet, a few seconds later, the pilots request a vector to return to the airport. Following instructions from air traffic control, they turn the aircraft to the east, and it rolls to the right. The right wing comes to point down as the turn steepened. Having struggled to keep the plane's nose from diving further by manually pulling the yoke, the captain asks the first officer to help him and turns the electrical trim tab system back on, in the hope that it would allow him to put the stabilizer back into neutral trim. However, in turning the trim system back on, he also reactivated the MCAS system, which pushed the nose further down. The captain and first officer attempt to raise the nose by manually pulling their yokes, but the aircraft continues to plunge toward the ground.
The Flight 302 disappeared from radar screens and crashed at almost 8.44. Six minutes after takeoff. The aircraft impacted the ground at nearly 700 miles per hour. There were no survivors. Like the Lion Air Flight 610 crash, MCAS is to blame for this fatal incident. But the plane crash in Ethiopia took place more than four months after the tragic event in Indonesia. Boeing published the Flight Crew Operations Bulletin just a week after that crash. This document clarified what pilots should do to disable MCAS if it wasn't working properly. In particular, the crew in this case would have had to do the runaway stabilizer non-normal checklist, ensuring that the stab trim cutout is set to cut out, and stays in the cutout position for the remainder of the flight. The bulletin also mentions, that an electric stabilizer trim can be used to neutralize control column pitch forces before moving the stab trim cutout switches. Investigation stated, that a copy of the flight operations manual, in use by Ethiopian Airlines at the time of the crash, was dated November 1, 2017, and did not include material from the operator's bulletin issued by Boeing on November 6, 2018. So the plane was doomed? Not really. Almost immediately after takeoff, right and left airspeed indications started diverging. The 737 MAX flight crew training manual indicates the need to follow the steps outlined in the airspeed unreliable memory items. This section of the flight crew operations manual instructs the crew to set the thrust 75% N1 in one of the steps. But the Flight 302 crew, having set the power of the engines at about 94%, subsequently did not correct it in any way. Perhaps at lower speeds, there would be less pressure on the stabilizer, and the crew would have succeeded to manually crank the stabilizer back into position. Finally, pilots going to do a stab trim cutout should have known they were dealing with a problem that had been around for years. This problem has long been described in the Flight Crew Operations Manual as the Runaway Stabilizer. Following this checklist, the crew would use the main electric trim more actively. This would help them reduce the force on the control column. And then do a stab trim cutout with no further consequences. I would also like to add, that pilots use electric trim on a regular basis when flying manually. When the pilot feels that the force on the control column is increasing, he trims the stabilizer into a neutral position with the electrical switch located on his yoke. With the constant practice of manual flight control, the pilot, as a rule, automatically trims the aircraft without thinking. This was the case with Lion Air Flight 610 when a more experienced captain fought MCAS for a long time using the electrical switch on his yoke. The crash only began to develop when control was handed over to a younger first officer, who barely engaged trim. As a result, we are dealing with a complex problem. On the one hand, there was the Boeing company, which was trying to overtake Airbus in terms of fuel efficiency, and was offering passengers a new aircraft with questionable safety characteristics. On the other hand, there was an insufficiently trained crew that didn't have the practice of flying manually and failed to apply the non-normal checklist when it was needed. Lastly, on the third hand, the Ethiopian Airlines didn't provide pilots with the Boeing Bulletin. 
the company didn't pay enough attention to the pilot's training and gave permission to the youngest captain and to one of the most inexperienced first officers to fly in one crew.